Uh, we've done a few uh, quick polls today. Uh, obviously, everyone here loves crowdsourcing. Quite a few people have heard of 99designs. So I'm going to run through, uh, I guess, who we are and what we do uh, pretty quickly because what I want to get to is uh, some of the stuff around uh, the questions people were asked earlier today around uh, building critical mass, about uh, building a two-sided marketplace and, and how to gain the trust of the people that use your site. Uh, so hopefully, as I take you through our first five years, uh, I'll be able to share with you some of the, the successes and learnings we've had along the way. So in a nutshell, what do we do? We connect the world with great graphic designers. Uh, so we have, in our community, uh, over 225,000 graphic designers from 192 countries. I guess what made us famous is that we pioneered the idea of a design contest uh, where multiple designers actually compete to deliver you the best design rather than being limited to the creativity of just a single designer. Um, so we actually uh, like to call it speed dating for designers. Uh, and and uh, to illustrate how it works, um, let's say you're after a logo. Uh, what you would do is you would come to 99designs, you'd fill out a design brief uh, which helps you articulate uh, you know, what your business is, what you're looking for, examples of designs that you like and examples that you don't like. And then we'd post that design brief to our community of 225,000 designers uh, who over the course of seven days would give you anywhere from 60 to 80 unique logos to choose from. Uh, you have the opportunity to give them feedback and help them refine those designs. And at the end of the seven days, uh, you would uh, pick the winner and walk away t with uh, the full copyright to that winning design. So uh, I'm just going to whiz through three quick examples. Um, this is uh, the, the design contest for TaskRabbit. Uh, sorry that some of the stuff is appearing a bit washed out on the screen. Uh, but uh, you can see here that uh, TaskRabbit, um, who was one of uh, the f kind of our initial customers on 99 Designs, uh, received 155 designs from 30 designers for just under 400 bucks, uh, which represents some pretty good value. Um, Peekaboo, uh, a company that specialises in custom-made photo books uh, and custom-made gift cards, uh, uses our site as well. And, what Pika do, uh, do is, uh, you know, being a, a greeting card company, they rely on fresh new creative uh, to make sure that uh, their greeting cards uh, uh, look nice and that their, that their customers uh, get a constantly revolving uh, supply to choose from. So from the single design contest alone, Pika Boo picked 25 uh, different designs from those designers and awarded them all in one go. Um, so you can see that uh, Peekaboo effectively treats 99designs as their own design uh, department. Uh, and through the power and the scale of our design community, they're able to turn around 25 different designs uh, in just nine days. And then, as Epi mentioned, uh, we also partner with Crowdsourcing Week to design uh, the five official t-shirts that hopefully uh, you guys have seen uh, the staff wearing. And uh, are they for sale, Epi? Or? We have uh, five. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can people buy those or? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, cool. Online, yeah. yeah, cool. So uh, those, these t-shirts uh, are available for sale and all of the, the proceeds of uh, these t-shirts uh, are going to Kiva as part of uh, Crowdsourcing Week's drive uh, for, for social good. Um, so, you know, do it, try it, buy it. Uh, if you guys could, you know, get behind uh, this and, and uh, buy some of the t-shirts that you've seen, then uh, it'd be really great. Kiva's a, a great organisation. So today, 99designs is the largest marketplace uh, for crowdsourced graphic design. As I mentioned, we've got over 225,000 graphic designers. Uh, we've served over 200,000 customers and we've paid out over 54 million US dollars uh, to our community. We've got staff in six countries, our main offices of which are Australia uh, and San Francisco, uh, and we're backed by Excel Partners, who are the same Silicon Valley venture capital firm who backed uh, the likes of Facebook uh, and Dropbox. Um, so, uh, you know, I guess the, the question is how did it all start? Um, and 
the answer is, uh, actually, we didn't think of the idea ourselves at all. Uh, it actually all started uh, with a battle of designer egos. And so, uh, to explain how this happened, I want you to cast your mind back to 2005, uh, where we had a pretty popular forum uh, for designers on a website called sitepoint.com, which is actually the parent company to uh, 99designs. And so on uh, this particular forum, in one particular forum thread, there was a group of designers who were competing against each other to prove who was the better designer. Uh, so, you know, they called it Photoshop Tennis, but basically one designer would come up with a fictional project, and then two other designers, or a group of designers, uh, would try and design uh, the best design to meet that fictional design brief. Uh, and the, the one that produced the best design would win nothing other than bragging rights. Uh, and so it wasn't long before, uh, you know, a, a pretty savvy customer came along, saw what was happening, and said, well, I actually need a logo designed. How about you guys fight it out? I'll give you some requirements, and I'll pay the winner $100. Uh, you know, the designers, of course, love this idea because uh, they were effectively doing this for fun anyway. Um, and you know, word caught on. Uh, people started to realize that this particular forum thread was a great way to get things designed. Uh, you got loads of choice, uh, and uh, it represented exceptional value for money. And so, uh, effectively, what we then did uh, is looked at our first challenge along our five-year path, which was taking uh, what seemed like uh, a business opportunity and building out minimum viable product. Um, so we heard the concept of minimum viable product this morning, and yet we apply this a lot within 99 Designs, uh, and, and you know, really what it means is doing the least possible work or finding the least expensive way uh, to prove uh, whether a market opportunity exists. So f for us, uh, back at this time, uh, minimum viable product just simply meant locking down the forum thread and charging people $10 to post their design project to, to our designers. And all we wanted to see is, would people pay for it? Uh, and they did. Uh, and so we raised the price. Uh, and they still wanted to pay. And in fact, more and more people kept turning up to post design projects uh, in this forum thread uh, because uh, it, yeah, it just represented a great value for money. So. Sensing that you know, we had a business opportunity on our hands, our founder, one of our founders, Mark Harwell, took a group of designers, locked them in a room for about three months, uh, and the first iteration of 99 Designs uh, was born in February 2008. Our second challenge was then building critical mass. Obviously, you know, uh, 99 Designs is a, a two-sided marketplace. Um, and in order to run a, a marketplace, or you know, in fact, in order to uh, do anything uh, that, that is involved in crowdsourcing, uh, you need to have a, a crowd. And in fact, we needed to have two crowds, a crowd of designers and a crowd of customers. We already had the designers. Uh, what we needed to prove to ourselves now was, could we attract uh, enough customers to make this a sustainable business? So we started out with a singular focus, uh, and that focus was trying to attract customers from the US. Uh, all of our pricing uh, and the language in the site was already uh, in US, given that, uh, that SitePoint, our predecessor, had uh, started out targeting the US as well. Um, so as a result of that, about 65% of uh, the initial customers on 99designs uh, were American as well. And as a result of that, we decided to establish a US office and hired local support staff so that we could get on the phones and you know, talk to our customers. Because you know, we were founded in Melbourne, uh, and you know, Melbourne's a long way from uh, America, and so we really wanted to get over there and find out what those Americans were like. Uh, and, and you know what? The results were pretty surprising. Uh, you know, some of the, the initial phone calls we had, uh, you know, we would pick up the phone and we'd say, g'day, welcome to 99designs. And, the, the person on the other end of the phone would just say, oh, uh, uh, I guess you guys are real then, and then hang up. It, it sounds weird, doesn't it? But at, at the end of the day, uh, I, I guess that taught us an important lesson in the value of building trust. 
and uh, you know while it may seem like a small thing having a phone number on your website uh, is actually an important thing from a customer's point of view uh, especially when we're talking about doing something entirely new like swiping your credit card and, and charging you know, three or four or five hundred dollars on it to get a design over the internet uh, it's not you know something that many people are used to so as I said we focused on the US uh, but actually, you know, being a, a global internet business, we attracted customers from all over the world. Um, and actually one of the most annoying things is that despite the fact that we're all based in Australia, whenever we met any of our Australian customers, they were shocked to know that we we're actually Australian. We, we've done such a good job of trying to be American that they thought we were an American company. Uh, and, you know, when, whenever we go, we, we do a lot of user testing within our own designs where we invite, uh, uh, you know, business people uh, into our office. Uh, we pretend not to be 99designs, but, you know, we just kind of show them our website and ask them what they think. And when, when we ask them, you know, would you buy from this company, uh, they said no. And when we asked them why, they said, uh, you know, it just seems like a cheesy American company. I'd rather use a local service. Uh, and again, you know, that, that taught us the value of, uh, appearing local and uh, the, the small things that you can do on a website uh, to show customers uh, that you're credible and that they can trust you. So the challenge three uh, was localizing uh, what was a global website uh, for our key markets. So here uh, again we took the minimum viable product, talked to some customers and figured out uh, you know what are the things that from a customer's point of view are really important in terms of trust. Uh, and those things tend out to be local currency, um, you, you know, makes sense, it's more convenient to pay in your own currency, but also uh, it means that you don't get charged nasty bank fees. Uh, phone number and, you know, local support hours in your time zone so that you can ring up uh, and, and ask someone, you know, how do I fill out a design brief or, uh, you know, can you help me choose a winning design? Uh, and also a local domain so that uh, you, you can be more easily found on search. Um, and definitely, I'm not sure what it's like here in Singapore, but definitely in Australia and New Zealand, uh, there's a lot more trust for a .com.au site uh, than uh, an international site. So we localised for Australia, Canada uh, and Great Britain initially. Uh, and so, you know, word of mouth began to build in those markets as well as our primary market of uh, the US. And then we reached a point where all of a sudden uh, we felt that uh, we had attracted a lot of customers, but the designer side of our marketplace uh, hadn't quite uh, accelerated at the same rate. Um, and so, you know, here again is this idea of a two-sided market and the importance of uh, having an equilibrium between uh, supply and demand. And, you know, when we looked at it, it actually wasn't surprising because for the first three years that we'd existed as 99designs, we did, you know, pretty much nothing to attract designers. In fact, uh, all we had was kind of a, a sign-up link and then, you know, they were kind of left to their own devices and had to figure out how to use the site for themselves. Um, so what we did in response to that uh, was we ramped up our community team who effectively... Uh, people who are there to nurture our designers and provide them with guidance on how to get started and, uh, and how to use the website. We increased uh, the touch points, so you know, we, we set up things like a regular designer newsletter, uh, lots of blog content, uh, lots of articles written by uh, you know, guest designers and some of the experts within our community, and also a, a very, very active Facebook page and things like uh, competitions on a monthly basis. Um, and all of that resulted in uh, designers in our community really becoming re-engaged again, to the point where uh, in Indonesia, for example, uh, designers started uh, organizing meetups uh, just on their own basis. So we would be getting sent uh, videos from uh, designers in Indonesia where they'd assembled 100 people you know, for a meetup just to uh, share uh, advice about how to best use the site and how to uh, best in an income. And so once we'd solved that supply and demand issue, uh, 
you know, what was next for us? Well, we decided that uh, the next step in our localization efforts would be to translate for foreign languages. Uh, why? Well, obviously, in attracting a global audience, uh, we also attracted a lot of non-English speakers. So putting the site in their language obviously represents a better experience for those people. Uh, in addition to that, uh, it obviously opens up new channels to reach new designers and new customers um, and creates a more diverse uh, uh, design community uh, which results in better outcomes uh, for both designers and customers. So, you know, obviously translating a site from English into a foreign language is, uh, you know, it, it takes a lot of work. Um, and so we wanted to be pretty careful about which sites we, uh, well, which countries uh, we approached first. So we looked at things like uh, appreciation for design in specific countries, the GDP of the country, uh, the internet penetration, and uh, e-commerce adoption, uh, and also the vibrancy of the startup scene uh, within a particular country. We you know, produced a long list of candidates, and in the end we settled on uh, Germany as the next target. Uh, and interestingly enough, when we went into Germany, we saw that uh, there were actually a couple of marketplaces, uh, design marketplaces just like us, uh, that had already uh, set up shop. Um, so in the end, what we ended up doing is uh, acquiring one of those marketplaces, a company called 12 Designer. Um, and so uh, what we really liked about 12 Designer was that they had not only a foothold in the German market with German customers and German designers, uh, but they also had staff uh, and, and, and local sites in France, Spain, uh, and Italy. And so that gave us uh, a pretty good head start into those markets as well. Um, so, you know, what happened after that? Well, here's a graph that shows uh, some of the results of uh, uh, our, our localization in Germany. So this is a graph that charts uh, the adoption of 99designs.de relative to our US site, which is uh, obviously the majority of our market. And as you can see, you know, from the, the red point uh, where we localized, growth has really uh, taken off. You know, that's obviously great for our community. You know, they've got lots more work uh, to choose from and lots more projects to get involved with. Uh, it's obviously good for uh, business as well. So spurred on for that, from that, we, we've taken uh, our Spanish language localization, also applied it to Mexico and Latin America. Uh, and you know, going forward, uh, obviously we're interested in Asia as well. Um, now Asia is already a pretty uh, important market for us uh, for a variety of different reasons. Uh, number one, um, obviously, you know, the, the startup scene here is really starting to take off. Uh, you know, you, you can feel it through the energy, at, you know, not only crowdsourcing week, the first ever, uh, but also, you know, some of the other things that are happening, you know, uh, Echelon's a pretty big conference going on at the same time. Uh, and, you know, there's a bunch of other groups, JFDI and Startup Grind, uh, which are here. And all, all of that represents uh, some real momentum uh, occurring within behind the scenes uh, in Asia. And as well as that, we actually localized uh, in Hong Kong about a year and a half ago. Uh, so we launched 99designs.hk, and in that year, we've actually seen some pretty tremendous growth. It's grown 100% uh, year on year. Um, so we're, we're you know, pretty, uh, pretty enthusiastic about that momentum. Um, and on the designer side of things, uh, we actually have a pretty strong community, as I mentioned, in Indonesia, but also the, the Philippines. And we've paid out a combined total of over $10 million to designers in, in the Philippines. Um, and, you know, right now, as I speak, uh, we've got our community director and uh, another member of the community team actually undergoing a two-week tour of uh, Indonesia. And so what they're doing is they're going to some of those meetups. They're going and meeting those designers. Uh, and they're also holding the first ever full day national design conference in Indonesia, uh, where uh, you know, hundreds if not thousands of designers uh, are gonna partake in a, a day of learning about how to be a better designer. So what's next for us? Well, I'm pretty excited to announce that as of today, 
Uh, we've just launched 99designs.com.sg. And here's what she looks like. Pretty, huh? So, I mean, uh, you know, we, Simon joked before about uh, somebody loading up his site and uh, it appearing broken on an iPad. We've actually put a, a lot of work into this redesign of 99designs. For, for those people that uh, have used 99designs in the past, you'll obviously recognize that this is different uh, and it's uh, fully responsive. So not, Singapore site is actually uh, one of the first international sites uh, to get the new look and feel. So uh, we hope you uh, enjoy it. Um, and so, yeah, we're excited to be here in Singapore. You know, there's a, a lot going on in this market. And, you know, really, it's, it's no surprise that, uh, you know, or why Singapore is uh, one of the top places in the world uh, to do business. Um, you know, the startups have always been a sweet spot uh, for 99 Designs. Um, you know, we, we've always been uh, pretty well used within the startup scene. Uh, and we look forward to empowering the next wave of uh, Singapore uh, entrepreneurs and, you know, lifting their dreams off the ground. So just in summary, I guess, you know, the, the things that have worked well for us uh, in our past five years uh, you know, the idea of starting with a minimum viable product, doing the least possible thing you can do uh, and, and risking the least to, to determine whether there's an opportunity there. Uh, building trust with customers is really, really important uh, if you're operating a website or trying to build a marketplace. And also building a truly global community. Uh, you know, I guess at the end of the day, uh, we didn't set out to build a crowdsourcing website. Uh, what we did was, you know, we just witnessed a naturally occurring behavior uh, in a forum thread. Uh, and so what we did was we put the tools and the processes around that behavior, uh, but really at the heart of it all, uh, I guess, you know, what we're about is connecting people uh, and, and making things possible and designing things in a way that wasn't uh, available before. And I think, you know, that's the real exciting thing behind crowdsourcing.